How's it going everyone? I'm back. So here's the thing. I needed a mental break after St. George, needed to really refocus and get into the training groove. That's something I've struggled with for really most of this past year, year and a half, but I feel like I'm back. So I'm about 40 miles into my ride today, just a little over halfway. Seattle is behind me. I am at Alki Beach, which is one of my favorite places. And I wanted to talk a little bit about my upcoming races, as well as just some thoughts on like dealing with mental stress and, and being okay with not being perfect. Obviously lots of races have been deferred and canceled. Here's, here's what is up. I am doing Ironman Maple Valley in two weeks from tomorrow when I'm filming this. Uh, it's at the end of September. And I'm doing Ironman California in seven weeks. Am I prepared for a full Ironman? No. But I feel like at this point, like I've deferred this race two or three times. I deferred it to this year's Ironman Canada and then that got canceled. And then I was like, fine, California. And my training is, you know, it's whatever. But I have just decided, smart or not, I'm just gonna do a full. And we're gonna see what happens. So these next seven weeks should be a little bit nuts. Really this video, I just wanna talk about a couple of things that have just been rolling through my mind. And one of those is um, done is better than perfect. That's something that I've realized with my videos. I have these fantasies of building out these amazing videos like in my mind, I make these great videos and then you know, sometimes it's hard to bring that to life, but I feel like that applies to training too. Like my training has not gone perfectly. I have not hit every run. I have messed up my nutrition a lot, but ultimately just getting it out there, starting I think is always worth it. And like, you know, at the end of the day, every workout is not gonna be perfect. Every race is not gonna be perfect. California is not gonna be what I hoped it was when I originally signed up for Ironman Canada like two years ago, but I'm just gonna send it and we're gonna see what happens. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a cruise ship right there leaving port. That's kind of cool. So this is downtown Seattle. Seattle is right there. The Space Needle's uh, right about there, I think on camera. Um, so it kind of came from all the way up there, came all the way down, way down there, came back up here, and then we just went around the point. So yeah, good for about 40 miles. All right, with that said, I'm behind the sun today, so I'm gonna head out. See you tomorrow. I gotta say, I'm getting really tired of the, with the animosity towards cyclists. I just had a car who didn't even pass me. They were going 90 degrees from me. Passenger yelled out his window, F you. I did nothing to him. We had no interaction. And honestly, like, I'm sorry to turn this into a downer of a video. I'm just like, I'm emotionally drained from this shit. Like, even if I made him wait 10 seconds, so what? It's like, you wouldn't like threaten someone in the grocery store because they cut in line or I just feel like one day I'm gonna get hit or killed by someone like that. Like I understand why people just become gravel riders or mountain bikers because they don't want to deal with it. And I know I shouldn't take it personally because he, we didn't even interact. It's the definition of not personal. Inattentive drivers who hit cyclists are already terrible. Like that's awful. At least with inattentive drivers, there's mitigation efforts that cyclists can do. I run radar, I run lights, I'm riding in fluorescent. Like I'm doing all the things that you're supposed to do. But people who yell out F you because I dare to exist on a bike, I don't think you can do anything about that. I don't know, that's it for today. All right, so it's Sunday. I am in Maple Valley, which is where the Half Iron Man will be in two weeks. It's only about a 45 minute drive from my house. So I don't know, I figured it would just kind of be fun to come down and actually see the course. I'm going to be running on the trail. I ended up getting about 65 miles on the bike yesterday and I have a 10 to 13 mile run today. So I might just do the full run course. Um, it is actually a trail run. So I brought my trail running shoes. It's not a paved course, um, but yeah, that's the lake behind me. It's pretty nice. It looks, it actually looks like it's gonna be a ton of fun. So yeah, just have to get this run in and then we're done. This trail is interesting. I don't know whether I'm gonna use my road shoes or my trail running shoes. My road shoes are a little more comfortable. This is very hard packed gravel. But the thing about using road shoes on gravel is once in a while, you get that one rock that just like jabs into your foot. So it's like, do I wanna trade more continual comfort with occasional discomfort? I don't know yet. This is a really, really cool course actually it's just basically all on this multi-use path which is 
let's say 75% gravel or hard pack and 25% paved, uh, it's not very exposed. There's sun, but it's not too bad. It's really nice. If you've run in the forest long enough, you'll understand. I've been out here for about an hour. I think I've seen one other person pull off on the side of the trail for a quick pee break. There's the walking group. Nice. So cool, 13 miles done. Uh, I will admit it was a little harder than I was hoping it was gonna be, but not too bad. Right now, I'm probably leaning to my road shoes, but that's just because my road shoes are a little more comfortable than my trail running shoes, but you can get away with either. So interestingly, what I was gonna talk about this week was being not a professional athlete and trying to deal with putting together a half or a full uh, Ironman training plan. And you know, I could, I could list off tips like indoor training is more efficient, brick workouts save time, you know, that sort of thing. Meal prep, meal prep's a good one. Food, food takes a lot of time. But honestly, the more I think about it, I think the biggest thing that I come back to is if you want something really bad, you can make it happen. And for me, you know, this past year has been really hard because I just haven't emotionally felt super connected to the sport. I don't love indoor training. I don't love training plans. I love swimming, biking, and running, and doing races. And when you can focus on finding the thing that you love, the rest of it sort of falls into place. And it would be a complete lie to say that there weren't compromises, there weren't sacrifices. Uh, you know, my wife and I have to, to plan our time well so that we can actually spend time together. I don't see my friends as much as I would like. I don't watch television. You know, I don't do a lot of the things that a lot of people do when they have more time. This is undeniably a very time consuming sport. But I think ultimately it comes back down to like, if you can find out why you love it, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like fun. So with that said, I hope you all are enjoying yourselves. I hope your racing is going well this year. If it's happening, I hope your training is going well. Um, two more weeks to Maple Valley. I'm excited. See you next week. Well, hey.